Hey guys, today I want to show you how I make these beautiful floating frames for canvas paintings. They're easy to build, inexpensive to build. I built this one for under $9. And you can turn it into a side hustle and make a little extra money. I got the opportunity to do just that. Let me tell you how that came about. So we have a friend who teaches acrylic painting classes. My wife has gone through several of those. Therefore, we have a lot of paintings hanging around the house and they need frames. So I started building frames for them. Our friend saw a picture of one with the frame and suggested that I start building frames for her to sell to her classes for those who wish to take one home. So look for that opportunity in your area. Maybe contact an artist, maybe give them a free frame. Show them how it can be a win-win for both of you. So this is the painting that I'm going to build the frame for today. It's another one of my wife's. And this is the one and only painting that I've gone through. I'm going to show it to you a little later and I need you to comment whether you think it's worthy of a frame or not. I don't think it's too bad, but you be the judge. All right, guys, so I can get two frames out of one eight foot one by eight pine board. This board currently is running around $16. So we're looking at $8 a frame. Add in the glue, the stain, the hardware, you're probably under nine bucks per frame. But today I'm not going to use pine. I'm going to use some beautiful exotic hardwood that I got for free. Let me show you. All right, guys, take a look at this beautiful hardwood that I am going to use today. Look at those boards. I got it for free. I'll tell you in a minute how I got it for free. But I'm leaning toward using this mahogany for the frame. This is beautiful, too. I, take a guess on what you think this, this wood is. It's not white oak. I'll be very impressed if you guys guess what this is. It's from Indonesia. So while you think about that, I'm going to start cutting the pieces down to size, give you the backstory on how I get exotic hardwood like this for free, and it's not just a one-time deal. I'm getting it for free all the time. So let me start cutting pieces. So my neighbor works for a fencing company, and they do a lot of lattice work and import exotic hardwoods, mostly from Indonesia. And the hardwood come in a crate and pallets that are actually made a lot of times from the same wood they're shipping. The company winds up just taking those crates and pallets because it's not the dimension they need and they will throw it on the burn pile or out in the trash. So my neighbor knows I'm into woodworking. He'll pull out as he has a chance, he'll pull out uh, some good looking boards and bring them to me, the company doesn't mind. And it's a win-win. He gives it to me for free. It's a great neighbor. So that's the story on the hardwood. Most of the paintings we have are 20 by 16. That means I need to have two pieces at 22 inches and two at 18. To figure what length you need, take the width of the frame, mine is three quarters of an inch, multiply that by two and you get one and a half inches. Take the width of the gap you want, mine is a quarter inch, multiply that by two and you get half inch. Add that to the width of the frame result, one and a half inches, and you get two inches. Adjust your calculations accordingly. The depth of the frame only matters in that you need to account for the depth of your painting as well as the inner part of the frame. Pretty much all the paintings we have are around three quarters of an inch. So I cut the outer frame to be one and a half inches deep. That way I can line up the inner frame, which is three quarters of an inch with the back of the outer frame and have three quarter inch space that the painting will fill making it flush or fairly close with the front of the frame. All right guys, did you take a guess on what kind of wood this is? Look at that, that's a beautiful grain. I love that. It's not white oak. Think exotic. I never would have guessed it in a million years. It's actually mango. The calculations tell me that my pieces need to be two inches longer for their respective side on the painting. I actually make mine three inches longer. I'll show you why after I glue these up. Here I'm making sure the back side of the inner frame lines up with the outer frame. I find these four inch clamps work good at clamping to the edge of my workbench. I feel to make sure things are flush and then give it a couple hours for the glue to dry. Then it's on to the next step. Now it's time to make a 45 degree cut off the end of each of the four boards. It's important that you dial your saw in. So first order of business is to make sure it's unplugged. You don't want to be known as three finger jack down the road who used to make floating frames, right? You don't want that. So I've got my digital angle finder, 45 degrees. It's all set up ready to make the cuts. So you want to place the side of your face frame up against the fence 
slide it over so the cut's gonna make it all the way through. That's why I gave myself an extra inch so I could do approximately a half inch off this end and then flip it around and I'll show you the other side. So I'm ready to make my cuts. Line it up, make sure it's clear. You can see it cut less than a half an inch off. When you're ready to make cuts on the other end of the boards, it's important you have some sort of stop block or jig set up to ensure accurate cuts. Combining this jig I made with some tape markings on my saw pins, I get accurate, repeatable cuts. I start with the two short boards and then move the jig back four inches to the back tape and I'm ready to cut the longer boards. So here's a way you can check to see if your equal sides are cut to the equal length. Put them corner to corner. Make sure they're even. Look at that. So that's lined up. See if I can turn it around without moving it. And that one is pretty much lined up too. Now it's time for the glue up. I've got a strap clamp ready and I make sure the corners are aligned and I check for square. A few hours later it's time to unclamp and check out the corners. As you can see these are very tight fitting corners. As long as you take your time and make sure your angled cuts are accurate, this type of fit is not hard to achieve. The next step I do is draw a reference line around the inner frame in about 5 eighths of an inch. This is where I will drill my recessed holes and pilot holes for the screws. I'll then use a punch to evenly space out the holes. These recessed holes can also be used to hang the pictures on the wall to whatever hardware you're going to use. Just make sure they're drilled the same distance from your reference point so they'll hang level. Our friend requested I use the sawtooth hangers for the ones that will be sold. Here I'm testing on a scrap piece how Minwax natural stain will look. I like it, so on to staining. I stain all over, front, back, and inside. Then once the stain is dry, I check the fit. I have a couple of quarter inch strips of wood I use to get the canvas in the general area and then I fine tune the fit from there. Now it's time to secure the canvas. I use 5 8 inch screws and usually screw from the bottom while using a cloth or a paper towel to clamp the canvas to the frame to keep it in place. Check out the gap and color contrast. I really like that color combination. What do you think? Alright guys, as promised, I'm going to give you the big reveal of the one and only painting that I've done. But you have to do me a favor and comment below whether you think it deserves its own frame or not. You ready? Here it is. Cabin scene on a lake with trees and a canoe. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Go build your own frames. Get into a side hustle. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.